Welcome to the Aftermarket Sunday's Edition Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date is 4-21-2019. Appreciate it if you subscribe and ring that bell for future updates. And I'm going to hand this over right straight to Miss Vegas. Okay, well, first of all, happy Passover to everybody and happy Easter. Hope you guys enjoying your family time and dinner. So definitely have a great holiday with your family and Hopefully we'll see you tomorrow. So um, let's give you a list of things to get ready for tomorrow. Uh, we're going to talk about ZNGA, FSI, ERIC, TMQ, VIOT, QD, ZM, Yeti, and MCD. So let's begin. We will start with Zynga. And you guys know this is a gaming company. And, um, you know, they have so many different product launches on the App Store, um, available on your iPhone and iPad and on Google Play for Android devices. And uh, they have so many interesting games, but, and a, a very good company, you know, the executives that work there come from Electronic Arts. And I mean, if you go look up the stock EA, uh, you'll see the value of that stock. So really smart people working here at the company, but furthermore, uh, the reason we're really liking the stock so far, I mean, it is an active swing trade. Um, I was hoping that Zynga would eventually uh, have a bit of a break. And, you know, it's having a little bit of resistance here. But you know what? Stock is still bullish. And I really loved what I saw with the block trades and really saw a lot of volume coming in on the stock. Uh, still bullish on the stock. We even traded the option calls on Friday. Uh, we had people that traded at 13 cents made money. The stock actually pulled back. People grabbed shares, uh, contracts for five cents and sold them for 10. They doubled their money in less than an hour. So you know what? Options is a good opportunity here. I'm going to turn it over to Jim actually and talk to us about the chart. And you may want to share your option experience. Yeah. Thanks to Miss Vegas, I was able to get in this option on a pullback after she alerted it to the room after we received the news about it. And I was able to wait for the pullback. It was right around 10 or 11 cents a share on April 26th. And so I waited for the pullback and I got in at five and I sold them at nine and 10 cents. So appreciate that, Miss Vegas. And that's right up here to the right corner of the screen. So let's talk about the chart a little bit. And this is a yearly chart. We've been kind of flirting up here with a nice little uh, support level at the 20 SMA on the yearly chart and you see that it did pull back here to the 50 and once it pulled back to that 50 it had like a three day good sell off from that high that 553 area we did hit a double top of 555 so what we're looking for is to get back up to that triple top area at the 555 and break it and it did pull back like I said twice to that 50 SMA at 522 so that's a solid support that's what we're going to call it with a pivot point area of right around 535 to 541 she did close at 544 so we're going to pull up the three minute daily right here let's pull up the 20 day first you see how it pulled back to this 525 area twice and then it had almost and it touched down right there in the middle of that period to support level right around the 528 so I've got just two supports I want to see that 535 pullback or that 541 and I want to see it exceed up to that 555 area breakout this is Zynga and the 20 day is starting to curl up on the 20 day and I'm going to pull up just the minute daily here and show you the we do have a pennant flag breakout or an ascending flag breakout here at the 546 area and I do believe we're going to have some higher highs on this. We were we called it out last week, and it pulled back a little bit to support. Now it's bounced back up to that resistance level. We need it to break the 555 area, and this is Zynga. The next one we're going to talk about is FSI. Yeah, so you know what? FSI is a company, and uh, they're called Flexible Solutions, and uh, they actually have um you know they make biodegradable polymers for oil extraction detergents and water treatments but listen to this they are first of all they're based in alberta and uh they're into environmental technology but this is what impresses me with this company they had double 
top line revenue. They went from $4.201 million to $8.47 million in the first quarter of 2019 comparing to the last quarter of last year. They are up 102% year over year. That is just amazing. And, um, you know, this has to do with um, the acquisitions that they made last fall, also the sales that they've had, and the exceptional work from the team that they have there. So this is phenomenal. I mean, wouldn't it be great that all these companies out there just double the revenue year over year? But this company is one to watch. And uh, this is on my radar. So FSI has a beautiful chart, and I'm looking for this chart to have a continuation. Now, the um, just to let you know, the financial results uh, will be, the details of the financial results uh, will be given on May 15th um, in conjunction with their filing with the Securities Commission. And they also will have a conference call to discuss that further on May 16th. So if you're interested, you can dial in and listen. Otherwise, uh, they did already have their earnings. This is an earnings mover, and I expect this to continue going up. Jim, over to you. Yep. So FSI, what I see about this chart, and I do like, is like she said, it did break out. So we're going to pull up the yearly and have one good look at the yearly. You can see it hit a yearly high and bro had a year high of 298. She's done nothing ever since the sell-off back in December and bounced on up. This is a beautiful stair-step pattern which I appreciate, and we did consolidate. We've had a breakout in the past four days on this trade. So low support, if it decides to pull back, will be low, low, low 250. If not, we're going to pull up the 20-day right now and have a look at it. I always go from the year to the 20-day, one-hour chart. Gives me a better perspective on which way it's going to go. So we consolidated for two days at the 274. That's going to be your second, maybe your third support at 274, with your second one being right here at 280, your first one at 288, and then the resistance level, which is the first support right here, right around the 295. And we got to break the 298. It is forming a flag for a breakout, sending pattern with a double top here that came out on Thursday at 297. So we've got to break that 297. Let me repeat the supports, 274, 280, 288, and 298. And any time you're willing to stop the video and, and copy and paste these charts down and use them for your personal use. This is FSI, and the next one we're going to talk about will be Eric. Yeah, so you know what, Eric is so impressive. I mean, Eric is involved in, um, you know, digital services and... Um, they also do managed services. I mean, you should check out their website if you like. And you know what? And also, don't forget the 5G potential. Um, you know, they are looking to, um, they're going to have also some sort of webinar on April uh, 24th. And uh, they're going to have experts talking about the end-to-end -end approach from 4G to 5G. And you know what? I really believe that, but I believe not till next year, 2020. So uh, you'll probably... 5g technology and um you know there's a lot of uh, companies involved in 5g but eric um had a nice move it's come out of a i think a trend there for over what three years yep and uh this is one that is an active swing trade and so i think if you guys like swing trades um you should definitely have eric on your watch because even though the stock did have a nice move and pulled back the stock and chart is still bullish so even if you were in the trade, got out, made money, uh, there's still an opportunity to trade it again and look for a continuation pattern. So I'm going to turn it over to Jim now here to talk to us about that um, and like to hear what Eric is going to do. Yeah, it's first commercial 5G network in Europe. And anytime you hear the word 5G is a, is a catalyst for a lot of these stocks to be moving up. And I've heard that maybe a couple of times here in the past couple of weeks about the 5G I think we even heard about it with QCOM and Apple, didn't we? Something about the 5G? Yeah. yeah. So it's a big deal. So let's pull up the Eric chart. Let's pull up the three-year, being as Miss Vegas did mention the three-year. And it is at a three-year high. We had that happen on Wednesday at 1046, and we did have a pullback to support level. We're going to pull up the one-year now and show you the one-year real fast. Also, you could see we're right pivot point of that breakout that we had at that 1046 high from that $10 low at 997.
pulling up the 20 day which I go to next we're having what we got what we got here is a little it did pull back but we've created a flag here so the flag can tell us two things it could either go up or it could pull back a little bit the 20 day is curling down just a little so I'm gonna call the low support on Eric right down here at that right under 10 bucks ten dollars will be and that's really not that far from this 10 11 so ten dollars will be your low support your third your second right around nine nine or excuse me let me take that back 988 it's going to be your low support 1097 to 1004 will be your first and second with a pivot point in this channel at 1015 and that's about where we closed at at 1011 with the resistance that we got to break here's your three resistance lines and we got to break that 1040 let me repeat that 1040 to get up to that 1046 breakout spot and again pullback support if any at all would be 988 then we got the second and 977 with the pivot point in that I mean that first and second support with that 977 at 1004 with a pivot point in the channel at 1015 with a resistance breakout of 1040 and this is going to be Eric and like I said you can stop these videos at any time and write these numbers down they might come into handy use for you the next one we're going to talk about, and this was a three-year high here at 1046. Eric, out of the way, now we got TMQ. Okay, so TMQ is a Canadian company, so they're into the industrial metals and minerals. And, uh, you know, very interesting uh, website. Uh, you can check it out here if you want to, trilogymetals.com. And, you know, they're into, you know, exploration, they're into mineral projects, they're into high-grade copper, zinc, lead, gold, silver, cobalt properties all the way across the Northwest Alaska. So the company was called at one time Nova Copper, uh, and then they changed, it became a subsidiary of Nova Gold Resources. And then, um, you know, that's how they, you know, got their name here. So, but then they became Trilogy Metals because they're involved in so many different kinds of metals and uh, they changed their name again. So uh, keep out this stock on watch on TMQ. And uh, the reason I liked TMQ for me, uh, first, a new high on TMQ. And I also like the fact that, you know what, this stock um, keeps making new highs. Like, I mean, every single day, the stock is overbought. It also has a nice pocket pivot. And I really liking pocket pivots a lot. It's one of my kind of like favorite setups where you kind of see like a bit of a footprint where you could kind of see where the stock is now ready to make more of a move. Um, so I am liking this chart. It's consistently been up. I kind of think it's even broken out into a new channel. And I am liking uh, that the buyers are in here over the last four trading sessions. So um, I am bullish on the stock at the moment. And I'll turn it over to Jim to give us those nice levels of support and resistance in case you may want to swing trade this or even maybe day trade it. So Jim, over to you. We're at a, <clears throat> excuse me, we're at a three year high here at 278. And when we pull up the daily, you can see the three year right here. So let's pull up the um, the one year. Had a nice little breakout. We tried to hit that up a couple of times, a double, maybe a triple top right there. And then the fourth time it came up, it broke out. This area is right around the 255 area. 255 for sure. So we got a, let me see here, we got a low support right down here at 235. If it decides to really freak out and pull back, <clears throat> this 255 though is a pretty solid low support for you. So let's pull up the 20 day. Look at the 20 day real fast. And I'm going to draw a trend line right in here and I'm going to draw another one right about here, a support level of 268. <clears throat> it can pull back to that 20 day SMA right there at 269, 268. And I see a low support still at the 255 area. So we're going to pull up the daily one minute. Let's pull up three minute. Get a better look at it. And let's pull up the five day. That will give us the right answer we need here. So we got the low support at 255. We got the pivot point in this channel right here, right around the 268, 270 area. And each one of these are a support line as they pull back. And we got the resistance that we got to break. And that's going to be right here at the 277. She did close at 278, so that's the number we got to break. We got the pullback support here at 255. If it hits it, 
with a channel of first and second support at 268 to 270 with and it might pull back to that like it did right here into close at that 273 area where that 100 SMA is but we do got to break that 278 and that's the one we're going to see this is TMQ and the next one we're going to talk about is VIOT yeah so VIOT I mean you know this is a company that's called Viomi Technology and um, it is a China play and they're in, in Gangzhou China and they are a leader of the Internet of Things uh, technology. And uh, they uh, did report their earnings. And, uh, you know, this, I don't you got to go to their website. I mean, they're into everything. I mean, they're into, um, you know, screen-filled smart homes. So they have all kinds of technology from, uh, they have like, uh, they're into water purifiers. I mean, you name it, whatever you need for your home, you should, you could check out what they have. Uh, they're into smart kitchens. They're into smart bathrooms, smart water purification. Um, you can just go on their website. They have an English version. So when you pull up the website called Viomi, V-I-O-M-I dot com, you'll see the uh, Asian version. But then there's an option there to click on E-N for English. And you can read all about this company. And um, this is just phenomenal move. I mean, they are a young Internet of Things company. They're they're very focused on integrating home appliance devices with the interconnected network. And they believe that, you know, when people are, um, they are obviously wanting to have a lot of automation in the home for what they call a whole house smart. So definitely you should check it out. Very interesting. But what's interesting to me the most is uh, really this beautiful, beautiful chart. I mean, once this broke $12, uh it's you know game time here i mean we could see this chart is super bullish and uh, i want to hear jim what you think about the chart because that 12 dollars was really important and i mean this ipo came out in september so it's only been out for seven months but you know what this is one company to watch yeah she definitely broke out uh, last week from that 12 dollar area as you see we had a little sending uh, uh pattern that went on a couple days before that and she did break up to that resistance level of 1378 and pulled back and then kind of created another flag and then had the breakout last Thursday and created a new high here at 1584. So I'm going to pull up the yearly and take a good look. I like this company a lot. The website is beautiful. It's one of the prettiest websites I've ever seen. So we've had a good week breakout on this stock. It actually had, had a support level right down here right around the... Uh, low $11 area uh, kind of hard to say I'd say probably right in here right around 1126 it could be up a little bit higher to right around 1144 so I'm going to put me two little patterns right there we're going to pull up the 20 day look at the 20 day real fast 20 day one hour you could see that whole week as the breakout happened back here at right around the 1138 we hit the triple top on 20 day at 12 bucks it broke out from that triple top with an ascending pennant pattern and had a little resistance right here at 1176 so that's what I'm going to call as a support at thir I meant 1376 that's going to be your low support maybe could possibly see this 1356 right here but this is just a beautiful chart beautiful triple top breakout in the last 20 days with a resistance level right here right around the 1524 area. So if we can break past that 1524, 1530, we're going to bring her on up to this 1584, and that's the next resistance we got to break. This is going to be VIOT. I'm going to pull back support right around the 1378, 1356 area, somewhere in there. If it decides to pull back, first support right around the 1458 with the resistance level we got a break here at the 1327 1527 and that's VIOT I just want to mention too with VIOT I mean they did they did have their earnings too yep. uh, not that long ago and you know I just want to just share quickly with the viewers I mean they had an increase but oh my god this is another earnings winner I mean an increase of 142.6% from the fourth quarter of 2017 um they had, uh, let's see here, 
they said that um, their earnings increased by 142.6% and 193.3% year over year. Now, one thing I do want to mention, I mean, I'm looking to maybe look at this company long term uh, in terms of a longer term hold for the portfolio. And of course, everyone do your own due diligence. We're not licensed advisors, just sharing what we think and what we see. But everything I'm reading about this company, too, is not only that the earnings are so strong, um, they are going to be launching 56 new products to the market in 2019. OK, and. They have an exciting new lineup of innovative products, including, again, I'm going to use this word, the 5G face. So again, we're hearing 5G. You heard it on Eric. You're hearing it now on, on v, Viomi, on VIOT. And they're talking about this 5G face, 5G enabled smart refrigerator with other additional models of the flagship one called the 21 face series of and then the AirBot. <clears throat> so they have so much stuff coming out and you know, we're talking 56 products. That is incredible. So longer term, can I see the stock go up into the twenties and thirties? My personal opinion? Yes. Will it happen tomorrow? No, but long term, like I'm talking maybe later this year, early next year, I won't be surprised to see the stock in the twenties plus. Oh, so yeah. we've seen it happen with other stocks that start out as these low, you know, nice priced IPOs is what I would like to call it. And I think that this stock is definitely with the performance of where have the money and, and where they're, what they're doing. This to me looks like a good opportunity to have something probably longer term, but you know, keep it on watch to your own due diligence and check it out. But this looks really good. So I just wanted to add that the earnings were good and all like 50, um, six new products coming up this year that is crazy so this company is busy lots going on this is high-end stuff too oh yeah high-end and you know what people love technology you know yep. um so people that love gadgets and technology they're all over this okay so the next one i talked to you guys about is qdn and q uh qd is the ticker this is you know what another asian stock i mean i'm telling you these china plays are like on fire like i know we haven't heard anything with the trade deals but until then it doesn't matter i mean these are some china plays that are really really good i mean qd is um was well, a company that started back in 2014 they are a leading financial technology company and um you know they started this uh they were called fun, you know fun the fun store group and um you know they are into um, uh, retail business of the auto group. So you can actually look at their website and see what they do. Um, but they are really there to create value for financial institutions. Um, they wanna help people, well, they wanna give them like various products and services you can see. Um, they have so many different things available. They have electronic products, they're into sports bag, they're into beauty, they're into watches. Um, they're into financial, like financial products. They're into mobile phone rental business. I mean, they're into like everything. And so they, you know, which is interesting because they will cater to everybody in the market that's looking for something. So you can definitely, um, check out what they do and you can also, they have a section, um, it's, and it's hard. You have to just translate the website again. Um, but they're into what they call the fun. They're called the fun shop group. And, um, even though they're called cutie and, on the markets but they they do serve financial institutions and uh obviously they list on the on the new york stock exchange but you should see what they do they just do so many things i mean you'd be impressed so um nevertheless i do like the stock um the a lot of block trades i saw so much money coming through here on the block trade report which actually shows me you know block trades you know trades over a hundred thousand shares or more sometimes fifty thousand shares more um, but I saw millions of dollars of trades coming in from the fat cats. Um, so they look like they're interested in the stock as well. And I won't be surprised to see a continuation on the stock. So it has uh, continued to make um, higher moves and then a bit of a pullback. But definitely, I still like it. It's an active swing trade. And uh, Jim can certainly talk about this chart. But this is a thing of beauty. We saw a nice move on it on Thursday and a nice volume surge as well. So Jim, over to you on this chart, please. Yep, 
Well, here's QD one year chart. We did have a 1226 high up here, and she has pulled back pretty strong back when we had to sell off last year to $4. Wow. She went, she went ahead and rebounded up and hit that $7 mark and pulled back. So we hit, had another top up at $7, and we pulled back again with a higher low. And then now we're reasoned back up here to that $7 area, which I would call almost a triple breakout here in the past six months. So let's pull up the 20-day. You can tell 20-day we had 470 low, and she's done nothing but gone straight up with a solid little pullback to support level right here at 504. And then we had the resistance high up here at 568. I'm going to put 566 blank which you saw that number there, 666, my unlucky number. But in stocks, I don't think it matters. 648 would be your pullback support right here, 649 with a low support varying right around this 632 with that 20-day moving average of the SMA. So I'm going to pull up the daily one minute. And first I'm going to pull up the five, the five-day, five-minute. You can see a low support right here at the 556 area with another support right here at the 591 and that's a whole dollar down from I mean 60 cents from where this high was at 668 so we're gonna have another support level right here at the 616 so we got a low support of the previous daily high which was right around the 616 area I don't think we're gonna see that but we might see at 632 and that was where she started she started breaking out at the at that five at that 616 area then consolidated in a pattern right here, right in the 632 to 643. So this looks like a great scalper play for me. And if it does, it did kind of pull back a little bit after hours, but rebounded back up to that 659 area. So I'm going to see the second support area right around the 638 with your first support right here at the 650 area. And the breakout resistance is going to be at 668 up to the 672 to 680 will be your next resistance. Keep a good eye on QD. You're willing to go ahead and take this chart, copy, paste it, and pull the supports off of it, and we'll see how she goes this coming week. But I do like the 20-day the pattern on it. Very beautiful chart for 20 days. The next one we're going to talk about is going to be ZM, Zoom. Yeah, so Zoom. Now this is a new IPO. And um, as you can see, this IPO premiere came out on Thursday. And you know what? I got to say, this man works so hard. So the Zoom CEO, his name's Eric Wan. He is, um, you know, he was there ringing the bell. And, you know, people may not know that his, you know, startup is maybe not as popular, let's say, as Lyft and Pinterest, um, because they just made new IPOs. But I got to tell you is that he is amazing. And um, his backgrounds are an interesting story. Um, you know, he raised, um, you know, money from top venture capital investors. And uh, he was, you know, determined to uh, make this IPO happen. And, uh, you know, previously, uh, he, you know, he worked at uh, various other companies. But you guys should, I can put a link about his story if you want in our video. Um, but, you know, his background um, you know, his parents, you know, he went, he went to study uh, mathematics and computer science at the age of 22, and he got married while pursuing his master's degree, and he convinced his wife that he wanted to start a company because he was very fascinated by entrepreneurs like Bill Gates back then, and uh, still he's fascinated by him, and he really was focused on the technology boom in the United States. And, um, you know, it's funny, he tried to come into the U.S., uh, but unfortunately on his business card, uh, it listed him as a consultant. And so they viewed that they thought he was a part-time contractor. So his visa was denied him to the U.S. And it took him a whole year and a half uh, to finally not give up and finally get ent into the U.S. So um, he did work previously at WebEx and uh, he just didn't like the way that they were um, doing the way they did their coding and the way they did the engineering. So he decided to do his own. And you know what? Good for him. He had to convince his wife because you know what? He quit his job. Like he worked at Cisco as well. And he had 800 people reporting to him. He was so passionate and believed in his dream to make a product called Zoom. And he 
quit his job and his wife supported him and said, okay, I believe, I believe in you. And he actually went to his friends and said, can you guys help me out? I'm trying to make this new video app and um, I need you guys to give me some money and I need to hire some engineers. I, I need to hire like 30 people. And he was asked, he asked his friends for $250,000 each friend. And um, he was able to actually get even $3 million for his startup with the former Webex CEO, Sarab ER. And you know what? Um, he was able to then start getting some backers and start uh, growing his business. But let me tell you, he went through a lot of hoops to get to where he is. And so congratulations to his IPO launch. So we will see a lot more and hear more about Z ZM. So Jim, let's hear about that because it had a nice little run, nice trading debut. Um, I think we'll see more about this and see more um, of a move, but hard to say because it's only been trading for, you know, a, two days really, or a day or so. So yep. what are we, your thoughts? Well, we had a triple top up here and she kind of lower, a little lower highs for the last three triple tops on it. And it did find a support area right back down here, right around the 62.92. And then she closed down here at, 60, $62 at close, and we're at sixty-one ninety with a pullback right there after hours at sixty-one seventeen. So uh, there's not much to judge on this stock right now because it was the first day out. So I'm going to give it about a week and start drawing some real good tr trend lines on it. But I do think if we're going to have – this is going to be a fun one to watch next week. Low support right down here right around the sixty seventy seven area or sixty thirty four. If we don't want to see it go any lower than that, then we'll just have to wait for the for the uh, consolidated area and for it to bounce back up to some of these previous highs that it did have. But I'm going to keep a good eye on this next week. Thanks, Miss Vegas, for alerting this new IPO, ZM. And Yeti is our next one we're going to talk about. Yeah, so, you know, I just want to make it clear about Yeti. So we're not talking about Yeti, the microphone. We're talking about the stock called y-e-t-i so please don't confuse the two brands um oh. and just to give a quick update on yeti or maybe you know we're not pronouncing it right yeti uh is the way to pr <laughs> pronounce it yet e um but this company you know two brothers um starting the company and you know they used to be involved in you know they would go fishing and they would like very outdoorsy people and you know when you go outdoors like obviously you're going to take a cooler with you right so people would take a cooler and they'd fill it up with ice. And what would happen is sometimes the the uh, the lid would snap off, or it would cave in, or the you know things weren't staying cool. So they decided to come up and they built their own cooler. And the mission was very simple: uh, use it every day if they could. And they wanted to build it for people that were serious outdoors enthusiasts. So obviously, if you like to go camping you like to go fishing, um, you would want to have a cooler that obviously keeps your products cold, but obviously have a product um, that they could also maybe sell to massive discount retailers. Um, and, you know, also a product that could take abuse because obviously when you're in the field, you're on the water, I mean, there's going to be like rocky, you know, rocky roads on there and things like that. And you're in the wilderness. So, you need to have a good product. So anyhow, they came up with this uh, product, Y-E-T-I. You can take a look at That's how their story started was really from that. They were like outdoorsy people. And if you go to their website, you can actually shop. I mean, they make everything. They make coolers. They make hard coolers. They make soft coolers. They make drinkware. So they have like for wine. They have for bottles. Um, they make bags. They have buckets. So you can get a, a bucket. They make chairs. They make accessories, so you can check them out. But the reason I like this stock, not only what the company does, but I had a trigger set up on this stock, and uh, the trigger did come into play on uh, Thursday, and boy, it was time to start trading this one again. So this waiting for the stock to gap up, and uh, the stock did trigger here at $32.25. Uh, and uh, waiting to see where this goes. But this is an active swing trade and waiting for a move here. I think this stock, a lot of people are watching the stock as well and maybe are in the trade. 
Uh, reminder, earnings is coming up in a couple weeks, uh, first week of May. And so keep this one on your radar. But this is a really nice swing trade. I like the way the chart's set up. And Jim, I want to hear what you have to say about Yeti. Yeah, it's beautiful coolers they make. And I heard they're really top of the line for... Mm -hmm. So I might have to get rid of my Stanley and get me one of these Yetis. So Definitely. Got, let's look at the chart here. We're going to pull up a yearly. We've had nothing but a beautiful run all the way from 1240 all the way up here to a resistance where we got it. Well, it got us an ascending triangle breakout beginning to happen with a resistance level right there, right around the 3305 area. And it did hit that. It did come awful close to hitting that Friday or did pretty much. And then we got another support level right here and another one right here. I'm going to draw a few trend lines in here where I think we could see some supports. So let's pull up the 20 day. 20 day, one hour. We got a low support right down here at 2831. So we got an ascending pattern, Cindy breakout. We did break out from that pattern here at 33, 3224. We did have a little top right here, right around the 3255 area, and that's looked like that looks like about where it closed at. And we do have a resistance high up here at 3443, and this is on a 20 day chart. With my resistance right here, right around the 3409, 34, 10, 11 area. So let's see if we can break this resistance level. We did have some consolidation on this period right here at 3305 a couple, three weeks ago. And she did pull back pretty strongly there at 2831 twice. See, we had a pivot point area in this at 3076 to 3186. And we do have that sending breakout right here from this pattern right here, which which you could see that support level at 3076. I do see everything in motion 20 days above the, the 50, which is a good sign. So it could pull back to this 20 day, and that's going to be right around that 3215, 3224 area. So we're going to call that your second support. Your first one's going to be right where she sits right now at 3353. And then a lower support could be right down here, maybe around 3146. And I don't want to see it go any lower than that. If it do, we got a low, low, low support at 3076. So we got to break this resistance level at 3283 to bring her up to the next resistance at $34, $34.11, somewhere around that area. And she did have a 20 day high at 3443. So this is going to be a fun one to watch next week. And I'm going to be looking in to see if it has options and also be looking at it too for the, for the smaller count traders. And that's going to be Y-E-T-I, and then we got one more favorite place that I go eat once a year, and that's going to be McDonald's. Yeah, so McDonald's. My goodness, I have to say this chart is beautiful. Um, I actually want Jim to show you guys. I was at McDonald's the other day getting a coffee, and uh, they asked for some donations, so I definitely gave a, a donation there. So a uh, thank you to McDonald's for giving me a heart for the donation. Um, well, if you're at the drive by, you should definitely donate. Uh, I know that the proceeds from Canadians go to the Ronald McDonald House, and I did do some volunteer work there at Ronald McDonald House, and uh, it's a great, great, great organization uh, where they actually host families that have to unfortunately take their children to sick children hospital, and instead of the families having to stay in a hotel, they do provide them accommodation kind of like a condominium style where they have their own uh, family room, living room, and uh, can actually have dinner in a beautiful open concept kitchens with other families that are there for, with their children that are unfortunately sick and getting treatment. So it is a really great organization for the Ronald McDonald House. So very happy to have sponsored that. Um, but uh, speaking of the actual stock, I mean, it's made some new highs here, and uh, the chart to me is bullish, and we have earnings coming up. So let me tell you how I'm going to trade this stock. Um, it first of all made a new 52-week closing high. To me, the stock's looking for an expansion move, and what I'm looking for, I am looking for the stock. I'm going to look to buy an earnings call. So I'm going to be looking at McDonald's uh, May 3rd expiry and uh, looking for the strike price of 202.50 is where I'm headed because that is kind of where I like the price. 
and uh, the option is a little bit pricey. It's not the cheapest. It, it was looking to trade around $97 for one contract. Uh, so you're looking at about a $97. Could pull back tomorrow. If it does, that's great because I can get a better deal. Uh, but I will be looking at that kind of an option trade for uh, earnings play. And uh, we'll see what happens. So, uh, Jim, over to you on the McDonald's chart. All right. McDonald's is my kind of place. I also donate to McDonald's once a year. I usually drive up. This is how I do it in a way. I drive up and the people that are behind me, I'll pay for their meal. So by the time I get my order in and the other one's taking place, I'm going to ask that lady, I'm going to say, hey, what's their order? Do you mind if I go ahead and pay their order? And then I just go ahead and drive off. But I do that every year and I've done it for the past five years. It's been my little fun thing for the year to do when I go eat there and order my, my Big Mac. So let, here we go to the, uh, we're going to pull up the year's chart. Let's pull up the year and see what we had. We had a triple, well, almost a triple top, but she did kind of hit up here at a resistance level of right around 190, 197. Then all last week, she had the breakout from the pullback of the 20 SMA, which is right down here, right around the 188.08 area. So she's had a real nice run. She's ran up about six, almost $7.00. To the new high here at 195 that we created uh, Thursday evening or Thursday and this is the one year chart we did have a low down here right around the 155 area where a triple bottom occurred maybe almost a quadruple and she did bounce up pretty strongly I think they got a new CEO if I remember right but I'm not quite sure so I better not say that but it did have a 200 SMA here at 174 and that's where it created a solid support three different times with a pullback right there on that 100 got you a good mcdonald m right there you see that big capital m and she broke out from that m and run all the way up to the 195 so let's pull up the 20 day sma look at it seriously we do have a low support down here at 185 kind of really really nice nice 20 day chart as you look at it with another one right at 188 so I'm going to call a low support on this trade at 192.43. If it does decide to pull back, I'll be watching that option call that Miss Vegas mentioned earlier, this um, May 3rd. If we can get a, from if we can get that ass down to a lower price, like around 10 cents or so, I might go ahead and buy me a couple of these calls and run it up to that back up to that 202 if we can. This is going to be McDonald's. It's my kind of place. Yeah, and just to let you know, so CEO of McDonald's is Stephen James Easterbrook. Um, he's actually from England, and he's very young. He's only 51, lives in Chicago, and uh, he gets paid $15.4 million last time we checked. And uh, he's still a uh, CEO of McDonald's. So uh, he lives in Chicago, and, um, you know, he's running the show there. So, so far, so good. So let's see what those earnings will show us. Let's see if he's doing a good job and we find out the earnings in the next couple weeks. All right. Well, that's it All for right. the aftermarket report. Miss Vegas, anything else you'd like to mention? Uh, yeah, just before we go, I just want to thank everyone for following, listening, subscribing, and resharing. I do want to mention I am going to do a special video uh, very soon, this week probably, and the video is going to be all about stock Loving stock twits. I know people sometimes don't, don't love stock twits, but you know what? It really is... Um, you know, you're, it depends on how you use stock twits and, and who you s connect with as followers, because some people on there sometimes are annoying and frustrating. And that's why they have a block feature. You just cut them out, cut the noise and really just engage with traders that are actually very good, very focused and very helpful. And that's really how I use stock twits, um, personally. And I'll talk more about that, but one thing I'm loving and I want to say congratulations to Howard Linston and Ian Rosen and his team at StockTwits that they actually have developed a trade app. And this is what they're calling it, trade. And it's going to be a commission-free trading experience that is coming from StockTwits. And this is just going to be phenomenal. And, um, you know, they're going to be a wholly owned subsidiary of StockTwits. And um, they're going to allow you to have self-directed investing and trading. Um, and uh, you'll hear all about it. If you're interested in joining the wait list, 
I will put the link in our video today. You can click on it. All you got to do is put in your phone number. They're not going to call you. They will just text you when the product is ready to go live. So at a live date uh, for the second quarter. So I think by June is when we're looking for this to go live. Um, so I think this is exciting. And uh, I'm sorry, Canadians, it's not available to us just yet. But it is, I believe, something that they're going to work on. I did message Howard. And I said, how about Toronto boy? You have this in Toronto. And so um, he said, not yet. So he didn't say no, not at this time. He said not yet. So I think that the first phase is to launch it here in the U.S. And then obviously maybe they will look to pr introduce some competition to uh, Canada. And I mean, I think Canada needs a trade-free app. So, Howard, if you're listening, you better make it happen because I want to see this here. Um, and that would be awesome for Canadians. And uh, you're a Canadian, so we want to see this. Um, so I will talk more about StockTwits um, this week. I'm so excited to talk about the platform and how it can actually benefit you as a trader. And um, you will actually see what I mean when I share some of the stuff that I'm going to show you. So thank you again for watching, subscribing, and following. Have an amazing rest of your Easter weekend and see you tomorrow. Feel free to come visit us in our room anytime. If not, engage with us on Twitter and we'll see you there. Have a great day. Be sure to, after the video, to subscribe to our stock Twitch. Uh, we do have links over here on our website. We have mine and Miss Vegas's, and we also have a link here for our Twitter account. So we'd love it for you if you subscribe to it. Follow us. Miss Vegas posts alerts on there on a daily basis. And some have been very helpful to our followers. So this is the aftermarket report. Please subscribe to it and ring that bell for future updates. Today's date, 4-21-2019, Sunday's edition is always longer than the rest of the week. We like to make sure that everybody's prepared. And this is the last word I'm going to say is that we love stocks. <laughs>